It needs to get done. Kill the buffalo head. All right, pause for a second. You'll notice here that she's skinning a buffalo head, but she ultimately ends up mounting a widgeon. That's because, for logistical reasons, this was filmed over two days, and they skinned a different bird than they ended up mounting the next day. Other than this, the video was shot step by step. Yeah, I'm just splitting the feathers here, just so I'm not cutting through any of the, the feathers themselves. I'm just going straight for the skin, and I'm just cutting along the keel, just the middle of the breast right there. Just like when you're breasting one out, clean it. So just, a little more careful. <laughs> I just flip my scalpel around just so I don't cut the feathers. I'm just splitting them. Just like parting them. So now I'm just working along that, that membrane. I'm just working through that membrane because I'm just trying to get to these feet. Because I'm going to detach these legs. And so I usually work that leg out just so it loosens it from that, that carcass. And then I'm just going to cut right where the, the femur meets the body. And you can even cut through this cartilage that the two bones meet and cut that through. Now I'm just going to invert that leg. and work along that skin until I can see the, the base of the leg. I'm probably not gonna use this bone because it's shot pretty, pretty clean in half. So we use artificial bills and we use artificial carcasses, but the legs are real and then we, we leave the bones in the, the wings and so Pretty much all we have to build back is like the leg meat and then the leg or the wing meat back up. That definitely makes a big difference in how, um, you can see how flat those feathers lay, the coverts on the wings. If you don't build back that muscle, all the coverts will all be standing up and it won't look as smooth. So you really do have to put back at everything you take out of the bird. So yes. here's an issue that we come up on a lot is broken bones. I mean, obviously these birds were all shot and so there's a lot of challenges that come along with that. And so this bird, the left or the right foot, it was shot in half. And then the left foot, it's shot at the base. And so what I'm gonna have to do with this is rebuild it or measure from the carcass itself to get that bone length. Cause I can't just run a wire alongside this. It's just not gonna work. So there's a lot of planning that goes along with getting that bird prepped when there's a lot of shot damage. Detach the, the carcass itself from the skin. And so how we do that is go to the backbone and I'm gonna detach it from the tail fan and then I'm gonna be able to work that skin down all, all along that backbone and get that whole carcass out. So I'm just gonna cut along these quills right between the backbone and then you can see there's little um, scent glands and it should be a little V V notch so I'm gonna just cut right inside that scent gland between the scent gland and the backbone it's scent gland like three times <laughs> I was thinking about cedars <laughs> cedars glands or dogs <laughs> oil glands and what's cool about little birds is you don't really have to cut the backbone out. You can kind of just pinch it away from the, the tail fan. So I'm just going to pinch right there. Now it's attached. So now I can just use my thumb and press into the, the carcass itself, not into the skin or else you'll, you'll have a nice little hole there <laughs> to sew up later. But yeah, just make sure you're putting the pressure on the, the carcass. Now I'm just going to pull. Pull that membrane down all the way down. But that's what's cool about divers is they have thicker skin so you don't have to worry as much as you would like a wood duck or something with sensitive skin. So now I'm going to invert that skin. I'm just going to completely detach that carcass from the skin at the, um, on the neck. 
so on our our bodies it comes about back about an inch and so I'm gonna cut back an inch on my carcass that way that neck length is the same because if I cut out here then I would have to later account for the fact that I I cut it too short so it's easy to open the mouth up kind of just put your finger in like that and then you can start on the bottom of the head you're just gonna work on that V and having a sharp new blade is really important for doing the head. I'm gonna cut right along that little, his little smile, and then up to the bill. Now I can kind of get my fingernail under there and roll the whole thing back. So now I can work along this skin, and then I'm gonna get to the the eye and I just have to separate the the eye membrane from the skin so I just got the eyes and the ear holes detached and now I'm just gonna pull that skin and it comes off fairly easy and I already detached it from the body so it just kind of slides right off and now I have my neck length and so I'm, I'll go ahead and measure my neck length we use um, it's called backing rod and it's, it's just like a styrofoam tube pretty much and then we use our, um, our foam bodies. And so I'm going to go ahead and measure that, and that way I can get that out of the shop and it won't smell. All right, so anybody that's eating chicken wing can uh, know there's meat inside here. It looks pretty much the same as a chicken, but I'm going to show you how we get it out. Um, we just do what's called inverting the wing. The uh, secondary feathers, which would be the blue feathers on a mallard wing, um, they're actually attached to this bone. I want to actually uh, uh, detach those. Some people leave it attached, but it's just really hard to get all the meat out um, if you leave them attached. So I like to detach them, get all that meat out, make sure it's clean. It helps me get the bone marrow out a little easier. I'll take a pair of scissors and scrape perpendicular and I'm scraping those feathers, the quills off that bone all the way down to the wrist. So that's just inverting the wing. Then I'll clean all this meat off. So we got a break right there. We'll just rebuild that with some wire. But it's pretty cool that they can, they can do that. <laughs> so this is the flushing wheel. This is what makes or breaks a taxidermist. If you want to be a bird taxidermist. A lot of people quit once they get to this stage because it is very difficult. Because it's a very fine line between ripping a bird to pieces and getting it clean. Especially um, the um, the speed in which this goes. Because I can sit here and I can probably stop that with my, my hand. But the one my dad rigged up for me when I first started, it was doing like teal on them. It would rip them in half. And so this is very important to get like a nice, almost worn down wheel. Yeah. This is almost, this is about 1500 RPMs. Um, your normal bench grinder is about 3500. So if you try to make one out of a bench grinder, you're going to be going a lot, I heard way too fast. So Yeah. You can see we're going down not too deep into the skin, but we're just trying to get that, that fat away from those quills. So you can start to see that that's, that's already to the point that we want to keep it. So I don't want to hit that, that point again. Because these are called the, fe the feather tracks. If I keep going against this, it'll break that attract apart. And that's what keeps those feather groups together. So you wanna get all the fat off without ruining your your natural tracks. It's good to kinda hit it a couple of times and then move, keep it moving. BU Nation is made possible by our sponsors, Yeti, Winchester Ammo, Drake Waterfowl Systems, Mossy Oak, Winchester Repeating Arms, and General Tire. We believe in their products, and we appreciate it when you support the companies that support conservation. Here you see the artificial head and bill, and we use these because it, it yields the highest quality product. A real bill you can use and rebuild, you know, you got to get all the brains out of the skull. 
Um, we have to rebuild all that stuff and the bills will actually shrink and kind of dry up over time. So it just, it doesn't uh, turn out as good quality as these artificial stuff. Um, the body, wrap a little cotton in the crop area just because there's a lot of fat right there on a bird you got to fill in. Um, we use the real feet, they're all injected um, with this stuff called Master's Blend that just keeps them from shrinking up, keep that good full live look. But uh, that's pretty much it. We're, we're really lucky these days with these high quality commercial parts we get to use. So unlike the guys back in the you know, 40, 50 years ago, they had to wrap their own bodies out of Celsius hay and kind of make all this stuff where we can just go you know, to McKenzie Taxidermy Supply or Matuska Taxidermy Supply. We can buy all this stuff and have it shipped to our house the next day. It's, it's pretty nice and it uh, makes it a lot more efficient for sure. Now these are formed to that piece instead of just injecting and letting it dry. Then you have these flat feet that are just sort of like hanging off the edge now that it looks like he's actually putting weight on that. So then from this point then we, we paint them. So I'm going to paint these gadwall feet up. Um, it's a pretty easy paint scheme. Just a little yellow, a little black. Sometimes you can white them out. An airbrush is key to painting any of this stuff. But less is more when you're painting duck feet and bills. You want to barely put enough paint to cover. You don't want to cake it up because then it covers all the scales, the detail. So this is after the sealer's dry. Um, you know, the texture's right. You can still see all the scales because they're not overpainted. And um, the detail's still there very light mist and black on the knuckles especially on a gad wall they don't have real defined black lines a lot of times sometimes they'll just be solid yellow so i'm just prepping my body for mountains i just like to pre-drill all my holes just so I'm not fighting a wire and you're dealing with a delicate skin. Any little thing you can do to make the process a little smoother and easier it goes a long way. Heat that wire up with the grinding wheel, it'll go through the foam a lot easier. There's just unlimited little tiny tricks and tips that you can do with this job. Now, <laughs> there goes your lens. <laughs> that could have been catastrophic. Stuck one in the wall one time. And I know I need to bend this back more into the body, and that's a big issue. If you don't push this back into it, then you're going to have a bird that looks way too long. And then it's going to throw off feather groups. So I'm just looking at my, my neck bend. So I'm going to pre-bend it. Because once I have the skin on here, it's hard to go back in here and dent all those feathers. So I like to pre-bend it. Then when I'm about to put this on the body, I just make it straight. That way I put it through the neck and then I just bend it back and it's right where it needs to be. So that's the natural neck bend and he's going to be alert. So. Yeah, these, these poor brothers heads have all the, the extra detail. The eyes are already built into him so it stays us a lot of time. And they're, they're right on every single time. So that takes a lot of guesswork out of things. So now I just dremel this out and pop it right on here and it's what it needs to look like. Just recessing this so the wire's hidden. Won't scratch up your walls. And then I'll cut this tag in down to a couple inches so I can bend it back into the body. We like to try to make our mounts as solid as we can, just 
for when you have to move and you have to travel with this thing. You don't have to worry about this wire coming out. Doing it like that, that's not going anywhere. Um, some people just hot glue these in, but that's a good way to make it rock solid. So I'm just building up this bird's crop area. Cotton does condense, so it'll look crazy right now, but then I'll wrap it down with this twine. The body go up and then have the neck material start, just a smooth transition like the bird would have from that crop build in. And one wash entails filling the sink up. This is always warm water, always be warm. And I'll just cover it with Dawn, and then I'm just going to scrub. I'm going to try to touch every feather. And then focus, if it's a flying bird, focus on those primaries. Because if you have any strings of fat or anything that gets stuck in there, it's just, they're not going to zip up. Feathers, if you pull them apart, and then you just run them underwater, they zip back up. It's kind of like magic. So, I usually do this motion too, it, it gets all the water in between each feather. But, trying to find any bit of fat or anything that is hiding anywhere in these feathers and get this bird as clean as possible. The clean birds are always smooth birds. So, so you get to a point in your wash cycle where I'm on a rinse right now so I can pretty much move this bird just by like barely touching the feathers just because they're so clean they're almost like squeaky and so my finger is like sticking to the feather there's there's no smoothness about it there's no like oily feel and so that's kind of how I know that it's it's almost ready to go to the gas cycle so after this point I'm gonna pour gas on it and it's gonna rehydrate these wings again so I, I can still like kind of mess up that zipper I was talking about but I try to be as gentle with the wings as possible, but I'm just gonna pat it, get as much water out as I can, but still being mindful of the primaries. Extra, so we get it as clean as we possibly can in the wash, and then we also do another gas bath just to get any oils that could be still left in the, the wings inside those wing pockets or in the head usually it draws out some in the head but you'll see once I pour this gas in here it'll start beating up I usually pour it on the inside and then I just tip it the way that gas can run all the way through out the head and then pour some on the belly and then I focus mainly on the back there'll be a little collection. You can see little beads coming off. That's oils. And then we'll just collect right here, in, I guess. But we'll let that sit for about 10 minutes. You can take it right out and dry it and then blow it and then it'll be fine, but usually let it sit there for getting all that oil off. Oil off. So I'm just gonna grab the wings like this, gently. And just squeeze as much of that gas off as I can. Then the same process here. Drying. Now at this point I need to really be mindful of those primaries. From this point on it's just gonna get dry. Dry the outside. Then I'm gonna invert the wings. And dry all this off. Skin off. And inverting the wings won't hurt uh, those secondary feathers. It's just better to get it dry in there. And this is what 
pretty clean looking flesh job it looks like all those feather tracks are still working together in a solid motion and so that's how you know that it's going to turn out to be a, a smooth bird especially the side pocket feathers all those will work together especially on a wood duck you want to make sure those are all intact i to turn it inside out and dry it so i'm just gonna put this in the head just to make sure i can keep this skin workable as long as possible because once the eyes are dry you can't really get them set as well as they should they could be i'm gonna, I'm gonna dry at a high power first to get most of the down fluffed up and then i'm gonna switch over to the wings and dry with the lower power with the blow dryer because you want to dry those as fast as you can or else they will warp on the primaries don't, don't get them dry fast This is our, our dry preservative. It just helps the skin dry out and it'll, if there's any um, pieces of fat at all, it'll kind of absorb that. And so I usually just pour it in like this. I'm kind of gripping the, the back skin. Just be careful doing that. But I like doing that more than inverting the whole thing. And so I'm just kind of shake it down into the head. And then you can feel it where it, when it's down in the, the feathers or the wings. It's pretty much the borax process, but we're going to get as much of it back out as we can. Typically for flying pose, you would next um, wire the wings, but I'm going to do a standing pose and I'm going to do what we call floating the wings. And so I'm not going to wire them. I'm just going to pin the wings inside the side pocket and I'm going to stick a long pin in this skin right here. And so it's going to hold that those wings up until it's dry. And so in seven days, I can remove those wings with that pin and they'll stay. Ready to go. Just gonna put this in the body or straighten it out. That's my pre pre bend I already did. And so now when I put it in the skin, all I have to do is push it back and it's it's right where it needs to be. I'm just bending that down so I can get it inside. And just be as gentle as you can with the feathers the whole process. And unfortunately there are birds that are pin feathered in the head, so at this point. Um, sometimes the feathers will be falling out, so that's just something that you have to be careful. Those type of birds, early season birds have that a lot. But as you can see, this is a fully plumed bird that you can pull on those all you want and they won't come out. In here. So I'm just going to put the caulk around the crop area. So this is just going to allow the feathers to hold right here and so once I put the head on and everything I can pull the skin up and it'll stick right in that that cog and I won't have to fight that skin drooping down. You're gonna lose uh, hydration in your carcass and in your, your net and so this is kind of allowing a little buffer just to fill in any extra spaces you may have. Yeah, it's around the crop, around the crop area. We're just gonna push that in there like that. And since I'm not um, wrapping my wing bones, which I would typically do for a flying pose, I'm just gonna squirt some caulk into this under the scaps, so you'll have a little shape under there where that muscle would would be on a live bird. I'm just gonna squirt on either side, like here and then just push it down under the uh, form itself. I'm gonna find where that leg hole is. I usually put my, pull my fingers there, that way I can navigate. Put it back in there. And I have my pre-drilled holes, and so I, it's easy to slide it right through. 
make sure I pull that skin out just because I have caulk right there. It's one thing, caulk can help you a lot, but it can also hurt you a lot if you, if you put too much and then get it everywhere. I'm just going to bend it, that way it's not poking through the skin on this side. I did a little bend right there. Caulk is a taxidermist's best friend. Just helps stick things where when you make adjustments, the skin stays where you moved it because the if you break down the word taxidermy, the definition is to move skin. Taxi to move and dermy is skin. So it's where a lot of people struggle is they try to just pull on feathers and you know make adjustments, but sometimes you need to just grab that skin and push it forward. You know, it might be a whole inch, but if you get the skin in the right place, then the feathers kind of lay where they should on their own. There's always a couple little touch-up final grooming things, but moving the skin in the right place is the most important part. All taxidermists are seamstresses. <laughs> So my incisions from here to here, so I just kind of, you know how, how long your string needs to be. I just measure like that because it's going to tighten all, all up. So I have plenty of string to work with. So you can either start at the top um, towards the crop or you can start by the cloaca, but I usually start by the cloaca. Just preference. Every taxidermist does it differently. my anchor anchor stitch and then I usually go pretty much every inch I'll do another stitch across so here's my first stitches right here I'm just gonna go an inch up and then keep it uniform uniform on either side that way when I pull up the end stitch everything's even all the way up ran my wire down in the wing bone. I'll bend this over. This is how we attach. Some people tape it. I like to use the string because I'm going to rebuild this muscle structure with cotton. So I'm going to wrap this wire tight. I'm going to go around the wire to lock it in. Then I'm going to take a piece of cotton roll tight. So based on a, the wing position of this bird, this muscle, you know, as muscle is, it kind of will form and move based on how that wing's stretching out. So this can be a pretty basic flying pose. Um, this muscle right here is going to come flat off this bone and it's going to be kind of stretched out. It's very important to not put any cotton on the back side of this bone because you're just trying to put it back where it would be when the bird is actually in this position. This gives the scalp feather group somewhere to lay to where you get a nice smooth back. This allows that to be really nice and flat just like there would be you know 20 to 30 mile an hour winds compressing on this stuff because that's you know what would be realistic for a duck in flight. Wow, these bodies have this big slot. This wing will sit right in there. And this meat, it would come straight back off this. So you got a nice flat surface right here for that feather group to lay on top of. So I'm at the point where I'm going to put the bird on the base. So, I'm still being mindful of my wing tips. So, I typically hold them up as I put it on the base. And it should slide down because I pre drilled those holes. That's what the feet dried on. So, should get right on there, right where they need to be. And I also recessed underneath. That way, when I bend the wires. It has a place to go and it's not going to make the base rocky. 
now where it's anchored to the base. And I'll just put a few screws in there and bend that wire around. Oops. All right, so I just put hot glue in there, and I have that bent over wire. And so now, with that glue, it's going to be pretty tight inside that that head cavity. And I can move it around, position it, and it won't it won't break off. So I just pull that head skin up on these on this head, and then I'm just going to pull all this skin. Up where I get that little uh, widgeon helmet, that's what I like to call it. A little part on the back of his head that kind of points down. So I'm just going to keep that skin falling. Always make sure you see it's, it's uniform on all the sides. Birds usually have an almond eye shape, um, and they're all slightly angled down. It's very slight. Um, wood ducks is a, it's a lot more obvious, but so that's what I'm doing. I'm just getting those those little tiny little edges on each corner of the eye. They just pinch, and so it's not just a perfect circle. You just gotta get that little eye shape going. So before my final grooming and pinning, I'm just going to clean them up real good before I sit there and put every feather in place with tweezers, make sure he's good and clean. So we're using all this carding, foam, wire, tape, different things to hold the feathers into place. But actually whenever this bird's skin dries out in about a week to two weeks, just depending on temperature, humidity, all that, the skin will actually harden enough to where you can take all these supports off. There's enough skin right in here in the wrist region to lock the wing into place. And it actually is, is pretty solid. It's, it's pretty amazing how hard the skin will get um, in just a week or two of drying. So then everything will kind of support itself. So uh, we had two really nice birds, Standing Widgeon, Alyssa did, uh, Flying Gatwell, I did. Um, tried to pick some good birds for this thing, you know. Not every bird turns out as good as these, but these were very quality birds. This is what you get whenever you bring us a good product. And um, yeah, Late in the season, preferably. Yep, yeah. yeah. good plumage birds. Um, it's about a day, you know, seven to eight hours of work for each bird. It's kind of average if there's no mishaps or mistakes, um, damage to deal with, stuff like that. So.